Good morning, New Hope City Church. We are so grateful uh, for the day. Uh, we're grateful that you are with us. If you're not a part of the family of New Hope City Church, we want to welcome you name by name and person by person. I want to read a passage of scripture to you. I know that this seems somewhat abnormal in the grand scheme of things, but listen, we can have church even if we don't gather together at a quote-unquote church building. Let me read this passage for you to you out of Exodus 33 as we start this morning. Exodus chapter 33. Let me read verse 7 on through. Watch this. Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp. And so it was whenever Moses went out of the tabernacle that all the people rose and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone to the tabernacle. The, the tabernacle of meeting was outside of the camp, but everybody else was at the tent door of their own dwelling. They were at home. Listen to this in verse 9. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. Watch this. All the people saw the pillar of the cloud standing at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose and worshipped each man in his tent door. So here it is. Moses, as a picture of the pastor or the leader, he went to the tabernacle, picture of the church. That's why I'm here. That's why a few of us are here wanting to minister to you. But the Bible says that even as Moses was in the tabernacle, even as he was ministering to the Lord, even as he was allowing the Lord to speak to him, the Bible says that when he went in and the glory, the cloud began to descend, the people stood at their door and they all worshiped. The people were at home while the pastor was at the church, and the people at home from their tent door, they worshiped the Lord. I want you to know this is not as unusual as we would think it would be because it is very biblical. Our heart for you, our prayer for you, is that you would not just be a spectator in what is going to happen in the next hour and a half or two hours, but you would be a participator. We're praying for you, name by name and person by person, especially those of you in New York City Church. We're praying for you that you would in some way sense the goodness and the presence of our Father, of His Spirit, because He is omnipresent. He is everywhere in a moment of time. We're praying that you would know His presence, the goodness of His presence, and you would be able to engage with what is happening in the service today. You would be able to engage with uh, these two young men that have graciously uh, come to minister to the Lord and thus minister to you. I want to remind you of this, New Hope City Church. Psalms 34 and 1, David said this, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. The Bible says in Psalms 113 and verse 3, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Bible says in Psalms 118 verse 24, this is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And finally, the Bible says in Psalms 150 and verse 6, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Right where you're at, whether you're in your jammies with coffee or you've already got up, you're dressed, you're ready to go, our heart for you is that you would find the presence of God and engage with what is happening today. I want to say this as well. We're going to throw up a, a, an address, an email address for you because I know many of you have prayer requests and, and we want you to know if you have prayer requests for any reason today, we just need you to go to prayer at newhopecitychurch.com. If you will send an email and a request we're hoping that by the end of the service, we will get those requests back to us so we can pray with you before, uh, before we end the service. So these guys are going to minister to the Lord, and it's going to minister to you. And then uh, the Lord, early, early in the morning, early in the week, he dropped a, a passage in my heart, a thought in my heart, and I'm just excited to share it with you. The title of the message this morning is this, Who Will Be King? Who Will Be King? That's what we want to talk about in a little bit. God bless you. Enjoy yourselves. May the Lord richly bless you this morning.
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show. With your heart and 
Father, you alone deserve all praise, honor, and glory. You alone, O oh God. We even remember the account of Jehoshaphat when he was outnumbered five to one in 2 Chronicles 20. His declaration was, Lord, we don't know what to do with this great company. We don't know what to do with this offensive thing that is coming at us. We have no answers. There's nothing among men or among humans, there's nothing naturally that can help us. But Lord, our eyes are upon you. And Father, in this day, we set our eyes on you. No matter what transpires on this planet, you are bigger, you are greater, you are faithful, you are steadfast, you are constant. God, you are forever. You are forever. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Father, thank you for your good spirit, the very spirit of Jesus Christ, the teacher, the Holy Spirit of the church. And Holy Spirit, we invite you just to teach us now. Those of us that are here, small in number, those that are streaming with us, those that are picking this up in the archives, we ask you to teach us now. Certainly, we want more than just information. We need revelation. We need truth. We need answers. We need hope. We need hope. And Father, we declare that you are the God of all hope. We bless you. We magnify you. Holy Spirit, let your word run swiftly through the cameras, through computer screens, cell phones, TVs in this place. Let your word run swiftly. Be glorified in this, Father. Thank you for recall. Thank you, Father, for who you are. And Father, thank you for who you are determined to reveal yourself to be in this hour that we live. May your name forever be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, those of you that are streaming with us, grab a Bible, grab a phone, grab something, open up to the Old Testament book of Judges chapter 7. Old Testament book of Judges chapter 7. Let these guys go ahead and do what they need to do. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 7, beginning with verse 1. Then Zerubbabel, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the well of Herod, so that the camp of the Midianites was on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, my own hand has saved me. Now, therefore, <clears throat> proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead, 22,000 of the people returned, 10,000 remained. Verse 4, but the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water. I love this. I will test them for you there. Then it will be that of whom I say to you, this one shall go with you, the same shall go with you. And of whomever I say to you, this one shall not go with you, the same shall not go. So he, Gideon, brought the people down to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink. And the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, by the 300 men who lapped, 
I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go every man to his place. So the title of the message, my brothers and my sisters, those of you that are streaming with us, and again, we just we thank God for your presence. Our hope is that this is a blessing to you. The title of the message then is, Who Will Be King? Who Will Be King? I want to remind you, the Bible says in Romans chapter 15 and verse 4, whatsoever things were written before were written for our learning, so that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. There is hope in this passage as it is relevant for what is happening, not just in Longview, Washington, not just in the United States of America, but it is relevant for what is happening globally. We are all in something together unlike any other time in history with this virus, corona by name. But the Lord, uh, again, just spoke to my heart early, early in the morning and dropped this in me, in my spirit. And so I have been excited for the last two or three days of just being able to share this with you. The things that were written before, this story was written thousands of years ago, but it is more than information. It is more than just history. It is more than just a a principle. It is truth. Jesus said in John chapter 6 and verse 63, the flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit that brings life. And the word that I speak to you is both spirit and life. We are believing that the Lord is going to take this word and this truth and connect it to your heart, and you will be the better for it. Interesting story. Love the story. Let's just dive right into this in verse 1. Let me read this with me again, if you will. Then Jerubbabel, which is Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the will of Herod, so that the camp of the Midianites was on the north side of them by the hill of Mora in the valley. Let's just start right here. When you get bumped, whatever you're full of, that's going to spill out. When you get bumped, whatever you're carrying on the inside, that's what's going to spill out. And I can promise you, and you all know this, this this virus came immediately like a flood, and it has bumped some people. And it's been interesting to me to see what has spilled out of people, certainly the saints of God. We have seen panic. We have seen fear. We have seen anxiety. We have, we, have se- we have seen all kinds of things that have spilled out of people through their actions, through their countenance, through their words, through the, through the things that they have demonstrated. My heart, my prayer is this, that the church of Jesus Christ, as this thing has bumped us, it's bumped the whole world. But out of the church of Jesus Christ, this is what will spill out. Hope, peace, joy, assurity, confidence, faithfulness, whatever is in you, when you get bumped, when you get shaken, it's going to spill out. Listen, the enemy of old in verse 1 is the same enemy that you and I are fighting today. The enemy was the Midianites. I'm going to show you this very clearly. The same enemy that Gideon was fighting in this day, hundreds and thousands of years ago, that same enemy is the same enemy that you and I are fighting today. Let me explain what I mean by that. The word Midian or the name Midian, this is what it means. It means strife. It means strife. Strife, biblically, is most often a result of words that are being spoken. Think about that just for a second. The word Midian, the the enemy of, of, of Israel back in this day, is the same enemy that you and I are dealing with, facing. It's the same enemy that you and I have been confronted by today. Listen, This virus, this storm is going to pass, but let me explain this to you. Again, Midian means strife. Strife, biblically, is most often the words that come out of people's mouth. Social media, local news, state news, national news, global news, there are things that are being reported that are causing fear and panic and terror in the hearts and the lives of people. The greatest enemy that you and I are facing, even more so than this virus, is the panic and the terror that has been released, that has been birthed because of words that have been spoken hastily, irresponsibly. Now, let me just say this, and this is what I've said to New Hope City Church. My people will back me up on this. We don't make any decisions. As the saints of God, we make no decisions out of fear or panic. But in regard to this virus, listen, We want to be responsible. We don't want to sweep this under the carpet. 
We want, well, we want to be responsible. There is nobody in Washington, D.C., there's nobody that is leading or governing this nation that is trying to keep the church of Jesus Christ from worshiping, from being together. They are giving us the information that they have as best they can. They are trying to help. And there is a balance here. There's a balance. We can have faith and we can have assurance and we can have boldness and we can have courage and yet God has given us a brain to think. Common sense sometime is one of our greatest allies. And so again, this storm will pass. But until it does, we want to use responsibility. Not even so much for ourselves, but for those that are around us. But I want you to understand the words that have been released by airwave, the words that have been released through the papers, through radio, through social media, it has caused great fear to be stirred up in the hearts of tens and hundreds of thousands. Again, as the Church of Jesus Christ, this could be one of our greatest moments of being able to truly model true peace. Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 27, just as he was getting ready to go to the cross to give his life for you and I, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives do I give unto you. There is a peace in God that this world will never offer. This world will never understand. That's the peace that you and I want to model. That's the peace that you and I want to stand in and live in in this day and time. Common sense, being responsible. We don't sweep this thing under the carpet. It's real, and it's taken lives. It has taken lives. But we want to make every decision in step with the will of God. That's how you and I are supposed to posture ourselves. So the greater enemy, even more so than this virus, are the words that have caused fear, panic, anxiety, terror. That's what we need to be mindful of. Those are the words that are floating in the atmosphere, but God's word is forever. The Bible says in Psalms 119 and verse 89, forever, O Lord, in heaven thy word is settled. It's fixed. Jesus said in Mark chapter 13 and verse 31, heaven and earth will pass away. My words will by no means pass away. In this hour, Psalms 119 verse 105, thy word, O God, is a lamp to my feet. It is a light to my path. That's right, and the Lord just reminds me that Psalms 119, verse 165, Great peace have they that love thy law, thy word. Nothing shall offend them. As you and I are in the word, we can live in the peace that our Father has promised us. Now watch this. Verse 2, Judges 7. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into the hands, lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. This has nothing to do with the message, but I want you to know that the Father continues to go after any pride that's in our lives, any pride, any arrogance, any conceit that's in our lives, because it's a stench to him. Now, verse 3 is where we want to go. Watch this. Now, therefore, proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead, and 22,000 people returned, 10,000 remained. Now I want you to understand this. If you go to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 20 and verse 8, don't do that. Uh, I'm talking to my sound folks. But you will find that when, when Gideon said to the men that were there, whoever is fearful and afraid, go home, that was actually lining up with the word of God, lining up with the law of Moses. And so it wasn't just a flippant thing. God was so smart, he did not want people that were fearful and afraid in the mix of the military. Because listen, Fear is a spirit. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And the Father was smart enough not to allow those that were fearful and afraid to be a part of this number. Now, this is something that I thought was very interesting because this is what Gideon said. Whoever is fearful and afraid, go ahead and go home. And I'm looking at the words naturally, fearful and afraid, and they seem to be synonymous. They, they seem to run together. They seem to be the same idea, but they're a completely different idea. Now listen to this. When you look at the word fearful in the Hebrew language, let me give you a couple different uh, words other than fearful. As I've gone through, I've got like 30 different translations. But as I went through those translations, give me, let me give you a couple ideas of what the word fearful means. Fearful, obviously, it means afraid. It means anxious. So he was saying, those of you that are anxious, go on, go home. Timid. Those of you that are struggling with anxiety and timidity, go home. Scared. If you're scared of this, go home. That's the word fearful. Listen to this. The word afraid, for those of you that are taking notes, and I have great confidence, especially in New Hopers, that you guys have got your pens and your paper, and you're already writing. Listen to this. 
The word fearful, once again, in different translations, afraid, anxious, timid, scared. But when you look at the word afraid, that's the word fearful, excuse me. But when you look at the word afraid, when you, uh, when you look at the Hebrew language, it is the word, it's pronounced hared. Hared. It is C-H-A-R-E-D. It is pronounced hared. Now listen to this. This is the definition. And this is where it is so absolutely relevant for where you and I are, for where the world is. The word hared, the word afraid in the Hebrew means this. It means to tremble. It means to tremble. When you look at the word tremble in Webster's Dictionary, this is what it means. Here's where we are. It is a season, it is a period of time of involuntary shaking. The word tremble means this when you look at it in Webster's Dictionary. It is a season of time. It's a period, a moment of time of involuntary shaking. This virus swooped in in a moment of time, and it has caused the world to be shaken. It has caused the hearts of men to tremble. It has caused the hearts of leaders of nations to tremble. It is a season of involuntary shaking. Nobody signed up for this. Nobody asked for this. And yet here it is upon us. I'm telling you, when you get bumped, and this thing has bumped us, when you get bumped, whatever's in you, whatever you're full of, it's going to spill out. It's going to spill out. And here's the concern. Now, I have to be careful because I know everybody's at home watching me, so just, just stay with me on this. According to the law of Moses, when Gideon said, those of you that are fearful and afraid, those of you that are trembling, those of you that this, the army of the Midianites have shaken you, go home. Again, in, in Deuteronomy 20, verse 8, it was according to the Mosaic law. I want you to understand something about home, just as a picture. Home is comfortable much more so than, so than the battlefield. Home is comfortable. Home is familiar. Home is safe. Home, for the most part, are, is without the challenges of life. And New Hope City Church, and again, those of you that are viewing with this, whenever you're viewing this, this is not the time for you and I to shut down. Everything in society is shutting down. Restaurants, all kinds of establishments are shutting down. This is not the time for you and I to shut down. This is not the time for you and I to slide into this mode of being comfortable. We are not to slide into a mode of familiarity or safety. We are not to slide into a place where there's no challenges. This is a challenge. But in every challenge throughout history, there is always a people that walk before the Lord, that name the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that will stand up and move beyond their comfort zones and their safety, and they will be light in dark places. This is not a time for you and I to shut down. This is the time for you and I to shine brightly because the darkness of this virus has caused the hearts of nations to tremble. Once again, it is a season of involuntary shaking. It took us by surprise. Most of us took us by surprise, and it is running rampant. But there is Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, be anxious for nothing, but in all things with prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, verse 7, the peace of God that surpasses understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There is a peace that our God offers that this world can never offer. My spiritual father, my father in the faith, Bishop Roderick Mitchell, did a conference call with many pastors that are connected to him. And this is his account. This is his report. The Lord spoke to him early in the morning a week ago, and he said this, son, what time is this? Or what time is it? Son, what time is it? And my dad just sat and listened and waited. And this is the word of the Lord to him. I want you to hear this now. This so ministered to me. My heart is that it ministers to you. The Lord said to him, this is not the time to lose your faith in me. It is a time to learn more about the God you have faith in. 
Let me read it again. This is not the time for you to lose faith in God. This is the time to learn more about the God you have faith in. This is not a time for us to lose. This is a time for us to learn. This is not a time for us to lose faith. This is a time for us to learn about the nature and the character and the faithfulness of God. I promise you this, that in every circumstance, in every situation, God is always looking for an opportunity to teach his people. This is not a time to lose. This is a time to learn. This is not an hour to lose faith, lose hope, lose joy, lose heart. This is a time and an hour for us to learn about the God that you and I serve. In every situation, if we allow him, God will use the situation for the sole purpose of teaching us. As a matter of fact, this is so interesting to me. Back in verse 1, Judges chapter 7 and verse 1, let me read this one more time. They'll get that up on the screen there for you. Then Jerubbabel, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the will of Herod, so that the camp of the Midianites was on the north of them by the hill of Morah. The word Morah by definition in the Hebrew language, this is what it means. It means teacher. It means teacher. This whole scenario in the background, God was intentional about teaching Gideon and those few faithful, his faithfulness, his protection, his provision. In every situation in life, if you let him, he'll teach you. It's interesting, again, Mora, the word Mora, the name Mora, it just simply means teacher. The Midianites, the enemy, were positioned in a place that meant teacher. God wants to teach us more about him. God wants us to learn more about him. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. And I'm going to ask you guys to bring that up on the, ver on the screen. Listen to this. This is in the New King James. Let me, let me give it to you in the King James. It says this, but thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is is stayed on thee, but thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on me, on thee. The prophet, but thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Now I want you to listen to this. Who will be king? Who will be king? In this hour, those of you who are representing Jesus Christ, who will be king? When you look at the name Corona in the Latin language, this is what it means. It means crown. When you look at the name Corona in the Latin language, it means this. It means crown. Crowns are worn by kings. Crowns are worn by those who mean to rule over you. Crowns are worn by those that intend to have dominion over you. And I'm telling you, this thing, this virus, would rule us with fear and terror if we let it. It would dominate us with panic and anxiety if we let it. But I would much rather let the Lordship of Jesus Christ, I would much rather let and allow Him to so rule and reign in my life that I don't allow this thing to have any place in me. He is King Jesus. And He wants to prove His Lordship in the lives of His people, His creation. Not just church, not just Christians. He loves his creation. He wants to show himself faithful. Who will be king in this hour? Listen, this is what, this is what the prophet said. But thou will keep him in perfect peace. Listen to this. The word is shalom. Those of you that have had any time in the church of Jesus Christ, you recognize the language. But I want you to give you the definition of the word shalom. Listen to this. But thou, you, but, or God, but thou, God, will keep you in perfect peace. Now listen to this. Shalom, it means this. It means completeness. When my mind is set on God, when my mind, when I'm meditating on the word of God, when I'm meditating on the goodness of God, it means number one, soundness. Since we're live, I can't back that up and, and, uh, and edit that out. So uh, got my boot all wet. Listen, it means number one, soundness, or number one, completeness. Number two, it means soundness. Listen to this. Number three, it means rest. This is, this is shalom. It means rest. Listen to this. Shalom means health. It means health. It means health. Obviously, the physical condition, the results of this virus and how, is it affect, how it has affected people physically, it's a concern. It is a concern. But God says, as my mind is on him, there is 
perfect peace. There is shalom. There is rest. There is health. Listen to this. But thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. The word mind, for those of you, again, that are taking notes, it is the word yetzer. It is pronounced yetzer in the Hebrew language. It is Y-E-T-S-E. E-R. It is the word Yetzer. This is the word mind. But thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. The word Yetzer. Listen to this. It means this. It means to form something or to frame something. It comes from a root that means to squeeze, mold, or form something into shape. The word speaks of the imagination. This is the word mind. Let me give it to you again because it's, 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 a, it's a strange, it's a strange uh, definition. It means to form or to frame something. Coming out of a root that means to squeeze, mold, or form something into shape. It speaks of the imagination. So then here's the question. What are we allowing to form or mold our mind into the shape it's in? In this day, in this hour, what am I allowing to mold, squeeze, form my mind, my thinking, my imagination into the shape it's in? Either the fear and the panic because of this virus, the dread and the anxiety because of the lives that have been lost, either I'm going to allow that to form and shape my thinking or I'm going to allow the Word of God the unchangeable, unshakable, unrelenting purpose of God's Word. I'm going to let that form and shape my mind into the place that it needs to be. I'm either going to believe the report of the world or I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. Again, we're being responsible. We're not sweeping this thing under the carpet, but we're not letting it own us. We're not going to allow it to let it own our peace. But thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. It is the word samak. The word stayed, or in the New King James, uh, yeah, it is stayed, yeah. Oh, you gave me King James. God bless you. It is stayed. Listen, it is the word samak. It is C-A-M-A-K. Listen, this is what it means. It means to rest. My mind, my thoughts, need to rest in who he is, who he's promised to be, who he has shown himself to be over the many, many years. We want our mind, our thoughts to rest in him. That's who he is. Now, certainly for those of you that name the name of the Lord Jesus, certainly for those of you that are the saints of God, you've said yes to Jesus, I want you to catch this because this is a part of teaching. This is a part of us learning more about God. Watch this. Judges chapter 7 and verse 4. Man, I'm so glad I grabbed two bottles. Now watch this. But the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Watch this. Bring them down to the water. I will test them for you there. Let me just stop right there. Just that first part. But the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water and I will test them there or test them for you there. Now, listen to this. Because, again, we're looking for the relevancy. We're looking for the application. We're looking for the truth of this. This is where we are as the church of Jesus Christ. This is is what our God is doing in the lives of the church. He is using this situation to test. He is using this situation to search. He is using this situation to examine and prove. The word test, when you look at it, is the word, it is pronounced saraf. Saraf, it is T-S-A-R-A-P-H, saraf. One more time, it is the word test. T-S-A-R-A-P-H. Listen to this. It means to fuse, to refine, or to smelt metal. It means to fuse or to refine. We're talking about precious metals. Fuse, refine, or smelt. We're talking about a smelter. Precious metals. It is to purge gold and silver 
for the purpose of separating what is impure from what is precious. The process of smelting as fire is added to the precious metal is to remove, it's the heat, it's the fire that removes what is impure, what is unnecessary, so that what is precious is clearly seen and it can remain. It means, my brothers and sisters, it means to purge by fire. That's what the word saraf means. When the Bible says that God, when God said, I'm going to take them, you take them to the water, I will test them there. This is what he was, this is what he was saying. I'm going to purge them with fire. Now, I told you last year, first the fire, then the rain. First the fire, then the rain. The reference is 1 Kings 18, Elijah on Mount Carmel, the fire of God coming from heaven. We are belie- this, this virus does not change God. He is not adjusting. He is not scrambling. It has not taken him by surprise. And we are still firm believers that revival, awakening, refreshing, renewing salvation is coming to America. We are believing for that. But we believe that before the reign of revival comes, or the reigns of refreshing come, the fire of God needs to do its work in the hearts of his people. It was, if you go back to 1 Kings 18, it was when the fire came that the people fell on their face and said, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. So the word saraf, the word test again, it means to purge by fire. First the fire. We're there. We are there. Then the rain. Metaphorically, it certainly means to prove or to examine. Now, I want you to understand this, verse 4. Let's stay with the thought of trembling. The test came at the water. The water is found in verse 1. If you take me back there, dear. The water is found in verse 1. You take them to the water, I'll try them there. Zerubbabel, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early and they camped beside the well, this is the water, the well of Herod. That's where the test came. That's where the test came. They were exposed to the waters of Herod. God said, I'm going to test them there. I'm going to purge them by fire there. I'm going to remove what is impure so that what is precious can remain. The word Herod by definition, and I'm serious about this, it's amazing to me. It means this. It means a fountain of trembling. It means a fountain of trembling. To tremble is a season or a period of time of involuntary shaking. God told Gideon in verse 2, verse 3, tell everybody who's fearful and afraid, who is trembling, go home. And then God said to Gideon, you take him to the water, and I'm going to allow a continued trembling to test them there for you. An involuntary season, a season of involuntary shaking. It was how they drank the water that determined who was going to move forward. Now listen, again, here's the picture. The word Herod, the water, it means to tremble. They were, these 10,000 that were left over, they were exposed to this place of, if you allow me to say it this way, this place of trembling, this season of trembling. They were exposed to it, this moment of trembling. And this is all God wanted to know. I want to know how you're going to deal with this water. I want to know how you're going to drink this water. I'm looking for something specific. God is looking for something specific in this moment of time. He's wanting to know how his people that name his name, that represent him, and that are supposed to represent him, he wants to know how we're going to handle this season of shaking, this moment of trembling. And make no mistake, it's a moment. This storm will pass. But at the end of the storm, I want to know that I've represented him and represented him well. I want to know that I didn't buckle like a $2 suitcase. I don't want to remember. I want to know that my faith did not wane. So God said to Gideon, you take him to the water, to the place of trembling. You expose them to this place. By definition, that means to tremble. And I'm going to test them there for you. And this is what God says in verse 5. This is what he's looking for. 
He said, so Gideon brought the people down to the water, to this place of trembling. And the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink. And the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. But all the rest of the people, the 9,700 of the people, got down on their knees to drink the water. Now listen to this. There were those that, would, there were, there were those that were postured to drink, there were those that were postured to lap. There were those that were postured to drink. There were those that were postured to lap. 9,700 of Gideon's army got down on their knees to drink, but there were 300 that were able to squat down and pull their hand to their mouth and drink the water and lap like a dog. Let me give you just a little bit of language. Listen to this, the word drink. And we're almost finished. We're almost finished. The word is shatha. Again, shatha. S-H-A-T-H-A-H. It is pronounced shatha. Now stay with me here. Let me say this again so we're real clear. God took them to the water. The name by definition means to tremble. They were exposed to this moment of trembling. We're, we're paralleling this with this virus that has taken the world by storm. It has caused a trembling in the heart of mankind. God wanted to see how these people, these 10,000, would deal with this water, this place of trembling. There were 9,700 that got down on their knees to drink. It is the word shatha. It comes from a primitive root that means to imbibe. It comes from a primitive root that means to imbibe. Now listen to this. These are the 9,700 that got down on their knees. They drank. It means to imbibe. This is what imbibe means in Webster's Dictionary. And I want you to think about this, about the spirit of fear, the panic that is running rampant around this earth, just in our own community. I want you to think about this. This is what imbibe means. It means to absorb. Are you absorbing the fear that's in the atmosphere, the panic that's in the atmosphere? Are you absorbing that? It not only means to absorb, it means to soak up. Like a sponge, it means to assimilate. Listen to this. The word imbibe can mean to conceive. This virus carries a spiritual DNA of fear and terror. You know, when, when women conceive, you know, they, they produce, they birth something. Have we allowed this thing to so affected, affect us that it's gotten this so deep that there's going to be fruit that is not good at the end of this thing? It also means this. It means, listen to this. It means to receive into the mind and retain. Who will be king? Who will be king? Corona? Because corona means to dominate, means to rule us with fear and terror. Or Jesus Christ, the king of kings. Who's going to rule us? Who will be king in our lives? Once again, the word imbibe, it means, to, it means to absorb, to soak up, to assimilate. It can mean to conceive. It means to receive into the mind and retain. But now listen, listen to this. It actually comes from a corresponding Aramaic root that means this. It means to be drunk. It means to be drunk. It means to be drunk. Let me tell you something about drunk folk. People, don't laugh. There's actually a few people here that really need this message. Drunk people, listen, drunk people are overwhelmed by what they've been drinking. They are in the condition of drunkenness because what they are drinking, the water of Herod, the water of trembling, what they are drinking has overwhelmed them. Are we allowing the waters of Herod today, the waters of trembling, are we allowing this virus to spiritually intoxicate us in this sense that we are drunk with, with, with fear, drunk with panic, overwhelmed and inebriated with anxiety. That's literally what the word drink means. Because listen, here's the problem with drunk folk. Their walk is really compromised. When people are really drunk, their walk is compromised. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 that you and I are to walk by faith and not by sight. We don't want to make decisions by what we're seeing, not even by what we're hearing. We want to be responsible. We don't want to sweep it under the carpet, but we don't want to allow this thing to affect us to the point where we've, we've got this thing so stuck in our minds that it's all we can think of, and we are not as useful for the things of God or for the kingdom of God as we would normally be. 
When you're drunk, your walk is compromised. Listen, when you're really drunk, your speech is compromised. You will slur and mess up your words and make mistakes. And listen, you and I need to have a soundness of mind right now. Again, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a a sound mind. We need to have a clear mind right now, now to know how to answer questions in this world because people, people are allowing this thing to rule and run over them. You and I, and more than any other time in my life, we need to have a sound mind. But listen, when you're drunk naturally, your, your speech, your words, your language, your ability to communicate, that's the way to say it, is greatly compromised. And listen, drunk folk, their judgment is terrible. Their judgment is horrible. I want my judgment in regards to what is happening to come from the Word of God to come from the hope and the peace that God continues to to release and grace us with. I want, judgment is just making a decision. I want my decisions to be made according to the word of God. You got that. God said to, to, uh, 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 to Gideon, send them home. Send them home. Listen, the Bible says this also. Uh, just in regard to those 97, those 9,700 in verse 6, it says, listen, they got down on their knees to drink. That is a position and a posture of surrender and submission. They got down on their knees. They stuck their faces in the water to drink that place of trembling. It is a, it is a posture or position of surrender and submission. We're not going to surrender to this thing. We're not going to submit to its fear. We're not going to do that. That's not who God has made us to be. Listen to this. There were 300, as we move towards the conclusion of this, there were 300, the Bible says, that lapped like a dog. And best we can tell, they kind of squatted down on their haunches and took the water and brought it up to their mouth and they drank. When you look at the word lap, it just simply means this, to lick up or to lap as a dog. But I, I don't, and I, and I, I, I say this, I, I've taught out of this passage several times over the years. I've just never seen it like this before. Certainly in light of what is happening, I'm seeing this through a, a new lens. And, and I stay, it, it, it's become such a cliche over the many, many years. It, there's truth in it, but it just seems people say, teachers say it just for the sake of saying it. But let me say this to you, and I've never said it before. Let me say this to you. These, these 300, their heads were up. They were able to watch. And th- this is a season where we do not submit or succumb, but we watch, we pray, we watch we pray, we are aware more than at any other time. We watch, we are alert, and we pray. So here it is as we conclude this, because this is where you and I want to be. Romans 8 and 28, for God works all things together for good to those that love him and are called according to his purpose. This is not a time to lose faith. This is a time to learn more about the God that you and I have faith in. This is not a time to lose faith. This is a time for you and I to learn more about the God that we have faith in. Now listen to this. There were 97 who drank, and I've explained the language to you. It was an overwhelming thing to them. But there were 300 that squatted down on their haunches, took their hand, dipped it into the water, and brought it to their mouth, and they lapped like a dog. So we live out in the sticks. Over the years, we've had several dogs our first dog, years ago when we moved out there, her name was Nikki. My older three kids were just little. I mean, they were little. They would run that dog all day. In the summers, 85, 90 degrees, those kids would be out there running back and forth on our property, and that dog would chase them. They'd throw the ball. The dog would get the ball, bring it back. They'd throw rocks. The dog would go out and get the rock and bring it back. All day, that dog would run, panting, sweating. The dog would go over to the water dish, gulp the water, lapping as dogs lap, gulp the water, and go right back out and do the same thing for another two hours. They'd throw the ball. The dog would run after the ball. They'd throw rock. The the dog would run after the rock, bring the rock back. They played with the dog. The dog would go back to the water dish, get more water, and go back out and keep running. That's my point, my brothers and sisters. You and I do not stop running. Even though we are drinking of this well, drinking of this water, we've been exposed to this place of trembling, these waters of trembling. 
this, this season of involuntary shaking, it does not keep us from running the race that Jesus Christ has established for us. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 and verse 1, Wherefore, seeing you are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and thus sin which so easily it besets or ensnares us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. How do we do that? Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. There was a joy that was set before him, and because of that, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. He is presently, my brothers and sisters, sat down at the right hand of God. And guess what he's doing? He's interceding for us. That we wouldn't crumble, that we wouldn't buckle, that we would be light in the world during this season, that we would be the salt in this earth that he has declared us to be. You and I still carry within our lives, 2 Corinthians 5 and 18, the ministry of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5 and 19, the word of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5 and 20, we're ambassadors in this world still today. We don't stop running because of the waters of trembling. We don't stop running because of the waters of Herod. We let God reveal who he is in and through our lives, in and through our witness and our testimony. Let me say it again. There's never been a better season for you and I to model well. This is what it looks like to have peace in Jesus. This is what it looks like to have hope in Jesus. This is what it looks like to hang on to joy. There are a ton of folk out there. I new hope I'm speaking specifically to you. There are a ton of folk out there that need hope. And the only hope that's going to carry them forward is hope in Jesus. They need you right now. This world needs the church right now. This world needs to see the truth of who Jesus is. And he chooses to reveal himself in and through by means of his church. The world needs Jesus. Because he is, John chapter 14 and verse 6, the way and the truth and the life. No man will get to the Father but through him. God has made it easy to be a Christian. God has made it easy let me say it this way. That's right. God has made it easy to be born again. Being a Christian, that's going to take a little bit of effort. But God has made it easy to be born again. And serving Jesus is not about going to church. It's not about doing more good things than bad things. Being saved and being a Christian and being born again isn't about I give up this and I stop doing that and I can't go there and I can't eat that and I can't drink. It's not about that. It's about letting the person, because Jesus said God is a spirit, John 4 and 24, they, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And the Bible says in John chapter 14, Jesus said this, if you believe, if you believe, my, my father and I will make our, our dwelling, our abode, our home in your heart. God has made it easy to be saved. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, excuse me, Romans 10 and verse 9, if we confess with our mouth, and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that God raised him from the dead, we'll be saved. The mouth you confess, the heart is for believing. Listen, if you're watching this today and you don't know Jesus, it's a good day to get saved. I don't think the end is just yet. But what this virus tells me is this, Jesus is coming back, maybe sooner than we believe. And if you've never been born again, if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, let me say it again. It's not about rules, lists, religiosity. It's about having a personal relationship with God who is spirit that wants to live in your heart. And it really is this simple. And if you're there and you've never prayed this, I'm just going to invite you to pray this with me. Just say this, Father, thank you for Jesus. I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth that he is the savior of the world. I confess that he died for my sins, all my sins. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive my sins. Wash me clean. Only you can do that. 
Wash away my shame, my guilt. Father, would you wash my conscience? Would you make me new? I want to be born again. And Father, I ask you to fill me with your spirit, to reveal yourself to me right where I'm at. And I believe in my heart and I'm confessing with my mouth that I am born again because of what Jesus Christ has done for me. It is really that simple. It is really that easy. I want to say this again. God loves his church, but God loves his creation. If you've never accepted Jesus, he loves you. But he loves you too much to let you stay that way. If you just prayed this prayer and you did accept the Lord, God bless you. Find a church. So New Hope City Church, if this has blessed you, if this has ministered to you where you are, share it. Send it out. Let's get this word out. Maybe you know some folks that this is just a real timely word for them. Send it out. Share it. The other thing, let me, let me just check this really quick. So we did get one prayer request, thank God, but it was from the Philippines. And they're just asking us to pray for the Philippines. So Father, for that one that sent in the request, we're praying for the Philippines, for the nations that, God, we would quickly get through this storm and on the other side of it, you would be more clearly revealed in our lives. Father, would you squelch the fear, the panic, and the terror, the anxiety that has gripped the hearts, certainly in the Philippines, in the islands, in Southeast Asia. Father, would you step in with hope and peace, with grace, and, God, would you, would you sprinkle and scatter a joy amongst your people that is uncontainable even in this season. Father, be glorified. Hi, Bree. I love you. Just got a text from Iowa. Father, be glorified in the Philippines. Be glorified throughout the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Two more things very quickly and we'll go. Um, and I want to thank you in advance for this. We're going to throw up, um, we're going to throw up a, an address for you because those of you that are tithing through Tithely, again, thank you for your faithfulness. These are, this is a different season, and yet we can still do this together. Those of you that are using Tithely, thank you. We're so grateful for it because, again, we still have responsibilities around here. Uh, the heat's on today because, you know, uh, you're paying the bills. We, ultimately, the Lord's paying the bills, but we, we thank God for your faithfulness. So those of you that are giving on Tithely, thank you. Keep doing that. But there are those of you that are not computer savvy and you've chosen to not do it that way. So there's a P.O. Box up on your screen right now. It's P.O. Box 42, Kelso, Washington. And the, the zip code is there. So if you're giving, uh, and again, I'm talking to the New Hope folks that you have chosen to call New Hope City Church your home church. Uh, we, we still need you to continue to do that, obviously. So you can just send it there. And we've, we've got folks that uh, they know how to take it from there. And let me just say this, number, one, number, number two. Thank you so much for your hearts. Thank you for your continued prayers. Um, thank you for walking through this in a way that honors the Lord. Again, at the end of this thing, we want to know that we have represented and represented the Lord well. We will be back. And let me say this too. Listen, if this has blessed you, let us know. Let, 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 us, let us know. Not just, just the whole thing. Just the worship. Our guys came in. They did phenomenal. Uh, the word, we believe it's timely, but if it's been a blessing to you, just, just let us know. We will be back here next Sunday morning. Same place, same time. Uh, we're going to worship, and we're going we're gonna to spend some time in the word. We just want you with us. That's what family does. Remember this. Moses was in the tabernacle outside of the, of the, of the camp. He was, he was in the church facility. All the people were at home. But when they saw God, when they saw the glory of God, the Bible says they stood every man in his tent door and they worshiped. You can worship at home. And one last time, if you need prayer for any reason, any prayer requests, just go to that address that's up there, prayer at newhopecitychurch.com. We love you. God bless you. God keep you. Hold on. Just got a text from the boss. See email.
okay, we prayed for the Philippines. Okay, so, 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 so agree with me, just as we get ready to go here. Iva um, asked for prayer for those who feel like their soul has frozen over. That's great. And they need the Spirit of the Lord to touch them. We also want to pray for healing for Bobby, for Donna, for Danae, for Justin, for Debbie. So, Father, all these names, you know them name by name and person by person. Thank you for peace. Thank you, Father God. Revive the soul of people because of this thing. Bring joy and hope into their hearts. Again, breathe the breath of life over them, Father, and raise them up in Jesus' name. For all of those, Father, that need physical healing, God, would you move on their behalf right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that the, 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 re the revealing, the reality of the healing power of Jesus Christ would touch them right where they're at. They're at body, soul, and spirit, Father. Would you be for them everything they need you to be? Bring health, bring healing, bring wholeness to their bodies, to their soul. Peace, God, to their mind in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week.